So, bam, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, Master, thank you for uh, another day, another week, and another opportunity to come together collectively, uh, willingly, Lord, to study and learn more about your word. Uh, we pray, Father God, that uh, when it comes to reading your scriptures and learning, Lord, it's not just about head knowledge, but it's truly because we want our hearts to be closer to yours. We want to look more like you in every aspect of how we do what we do, Lord. So we pray, Master, that um, we allow you to live your life through us, Lord. Uh, we pray that we can be the vessel that you use uh, in this everyday life to share the gospel of Jesus Christ and be more effective and help men and women to uh, have a moment where they reflect on life and what's important and they can make an appropriate decision for you so that the free gift that you desire to give unto them, they can willingly receive uh, by trusting you as Lord and as Savior. Uh, Master, we just thank you for everything that you've allowed us to see in the encounter. And we pray, Lord God, that you continue to bless us uh, and keep us going throughout the rest of the week. Master, we love you and we thank you. These and all blessings we ask of you in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. All right. Yeah. So, last week, we spoke about um, Jesus, and we spoke about how uh, he went to go visit his friends. Um, but unfortunately, one of his friends had passed away before he made it. And as a matter of fact, that was the entire purpose of his whole trip. Uh, he went to go and see about old Lazarus who had passed away. And um, when he received the message, um, apparently Lazarus was still alive, but he wasn't doing well. And Christ knew uh, how this was going to turn out. And he intentionally took his time. He did not rush at all. Uh, he intentionally took his time. Uh, he, The Bible says he tarried. He he took two days with longer staying where he was. And then he made his way to where uh, Lazarus was. And our entire focus for this lesson is looking at how Jesus is what we call the resurrection. OK, uh, this is the final lesson in the I am series where we look at how Jesus continues to tell you who he is. Right. And um, it's important as believers that we know who Jesus is um, and not just say stuff that we've heard all our lives, but actually know who he is because we have decided to intentionally investigate the claims that Jesus has made. If anybody says the things that Jesus says nowadays, they come and they say, uh, you know, Jesus says that I am the way, the truth, and the life. <laughs> you know, he says that I am the bread of life. He says that I am the resurrection. If any of us hear anybody say that, the first thing we're going to do is that I'm going to be like, wait, what? Nah, bro. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> yeah. And to many of the Jews, those claims that he was making sounded crazy. Like, man, what are you talking about, bro? But Jesus always demonstrated his power. But not only that, when he spoke, there was something that tugged at your heart in a way like none other because everything that he was saying was true, right? Was and is true. And it's incredible when we look at this. Jesus is now giving us a picture of himself when he calls himself the resurrection, right? Um, most people are waiting for what we call uh, the rapture. Um, most people are trying to pinpoint that people be like oh the rapture is going to happen on this day at, at this time nobody can tell you when that's going to happen right christ himself even said that we're not waiting for a particular day we're waiting for jesus to get up and come and do his thing because he is the resurrection right and with that being said it gives us something to look forward to right that this life isn't all there is i just go to school and I get a job and I get a married, I get married and have kids and die, and that's it. Uh, now nah, there's more to this life, and Christ wants to assure you there's more to life even after you die. All right. Even after you die, that's not all it is to it. You still gonna have your consciousness, you're gonna have your memory, right? You're gonna have all of that when you pass away. Now, where you go depends on if you have believed that Jesus is who he says he is, right? And that's the one thing Christ wants to massage upon our hearts to truly believe. So let's look at uh, the scripture today. Let's let's 
uh, pick up where we left off. And um, let's see more of what Christ is entailing to us. Matter of fact, let me do this so we don't skip ahead. I don't want to give y'all too much. You're going to be like, wait, what's that? Let me go back to slide number 34. Bam, that's where we are. And now I'm going to share with you guys. Boom. All right, can you guys see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Um, and you know what's crazy today? I'm actually letting y'all make it. I ain't hitting y'all with icebreakers today. I'm letting you make it for today. <laughs> but next okay, time, okay. we're going to have icebreakers. Let's believe that. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me find my slideshow. And... From current slide. Boom, shakalaka. All right. That's a better view for you, I hope. All right. So, again, we are starting where we left off. And there was a conversation between Jesus and Martha. Okay. Jesus came into uh, the village where uh, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus stayed. And he hadn't made it to her house yet. He was on the outskirts of the village. And then... Um, Martha heard that he had come, and so she got up and ran to where he was, okay? So <clears throat> they begin to have a conversation, um, and the first thing she says is, Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. And she didn't say that in a spiteful way, but she said that, you know, broken heart, that's her brother. Um, but she still loved God, and she didn't disrespect the Lord, regardless of the fact that he didn't make it to her, uh, to Lazarus in time. Verse 25, Jesus said to her, I, well, actually, before we read this verse, <laughs> um, she said that uh, even now I know that the Lord will give you um, anything that you ask for. And then Jesus said, hey, um, you know, your brother will rise again. And she said, yes, Lord, I know he'll rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Okay. Uh, right here. She was right that he would rise again, but her timing was wrong. And there's something that we're going to look at that's going to be heavy. I want y'all to pay attention to this for sure. Okay. John 11, 25 and 26. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection <laughs> and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Okay. Jesus is letting her know, hey, yeah. Uh, yeah. I have the power. We're not waiting on a particular event in history. We're not waiting on the day. I am the resurrection and I hold that particular power. Right. And he's asking, do you believe this? Again, what is resurrection? It is the restoration of life after a person is deceased okay again what is resurrection it is the restoration of life after a person is deceased okay that's important and when a person dies on this side yo that's it right it ain't no coming back we can do stuff to try to preserve their life or keep them from actually passing away all the way. Like I said, we yeah. do CPR, you know, you breathe in their mouth, you push on their chest to try to make sure that heart doesn't stop and that their soul doesn't leave the body, right? Yeah. But once a person is dead, I don't care what you do, what you administer, that's it. Ain't no coming back, right? Yeah. And one reason why Jesus allowed Lazarus to pass away and didn't just heal him immediately is because Jesus needed people to know for a fact he was dead dead right and so after you know somebody could kind of look like it passed away that day but then you know they could come back right and it's not that they died they might have went in a coma you know their blood pressure might have went down you might not be able to detect the heartbeat all of this stuff right um those types of things could happen so him coming on that day it wouldn't have seemed like something but jesus let four days pass him <laughs> four days passed before he came to perform resurrection. All right. Now, again, what we want to do is we want to reassure you that Jesus truly has this power. 
This isn't the first time Jesus has raised somebody from the dead or even spoke about his ability to do so. John chapter 5, verses 24 through 27 say this. Most assuredly, this is Christ speaking. I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life. Speaking about the one who sent him was God the Father. Okay. And shall not come into judgment, but is passed from death into life. This is where we speak about being born again, right? <laughs> You're born again when you have faith, when you believe in Jesus the Christ as the only one who can save you from sin, right? And save you from hell. Um, <clears throat> you pass from death unto life once you transfer all of your trust from yourself completely to Jesus and you make him the Lord of your life, okay? Again, um, and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. Now look again, he says, most assuredly, or in the King James Version, it says, truly, truly, I say unto you, right? He let you know that this is, this is straight truth, okay? There's no lie detected. I say to you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God. Who do we know the Son of God to be? Hmm. Anybody know who the Son of God is? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I say to you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, who is Jesus, and those who <laughs> hear will live. Jesus is so cold. All he has to do is speak and dead people rise. You hear what I'm telling you? All they have to do is speak and dead men will rise. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself. Remember, Jesus and the Father, God the Father, are co-equal, co-eternal, right? They have the same power. Neither is greater than the other, but Christ submits himself to the will of his Father. Okay, this is what we're seeing in this passage. Again, for as the father has life in himself, so he has granted the son to have life in himself and has given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the son of man. This yeah. phrase son of man simply means that Jesus uh, was fully man. He was human, right? I'm going to give you a term. So if you got pen and paper, you can write this down. Jesus is the only person in history who has something called the hypostatic union. Okay? Hypo, H-Y-P-O, static, S-T-A-T-I-C, separate word, union. Okay? Hypostatic union. That means there's two natures and one being. Okay? Those two natures is Jesus was truly divine, which means that he is God, 100% God. And he was truly human. He was man, 100% man in every aspect, right? When he was a baby, he had to have his diapers changed. When he was a baby, he had to learn how to talk. When he was in school, he had to learn how to write, okay? He had to learn how to walk. We're talking about God. You feel me? It's incredible to think about that. Okay. He went through puberty, right? He he went to school. He graduated. He did all of that. He is a hundred percent man, right? A real human. Everything that you experience, he experienced, except without sin. That's what's so incredible about Jesus. Okay. And so again. For the father has life in himself, so he has granted the son to have life in himself and has given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the son of man. Again, that phrase son of man simply means that Jesus was human. Okay. Jesus, son of man. Mm -hmm. 
John 5, 28 and 30. This is where we're finna get a little heavy. Okay. Do not marvel at this. Right? When it says marvel, that's when you're like, oh, what is that? Right? Seeing something great and dynamic. To us, that's incredible that Jesus not only has the ability to execute judgment, but he also has the ability simply to speak and the dead will rise. All right? Do not marvel at this. For the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth. Those who have done good to the resurrection of a life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge and my judgment is righteous. Because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. Jesus and the Father in heaven, Yahweh, right, Jehovah, they are so in tune, they don't do anything separate from each other. Everything that they, they, they do, they do it on one accord, right? And again, Jesus submits himself completely to what the Father desires, okay? He completely submits himself to the will of the father. So that's why he just said what he said right here. I can, um, I can't of myself do nothing, right? He never does anything without God. As I hear, I judge and my judgment is righteous because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the father who sent me. Yeah. Let's focus on these two things right here, starting in verse 29. Okay. Actually, let's hit 28 and 29, because this is where it's going to get real gangster. Verse 28, do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice. Remember, Jesus, we're focusing on what Jesus is saying. He says that I am the resurrection, okay? Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth. Y'all ever seen a dead man get up? Mm -mm. You will. No. <laughs> One day, you will see dead men get up. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Joffrey, I'm not talking about zombies, okay? <laughs> you will see a dead man rise, right? Because of the voice mm -hmm. of the Lord. <laughs> Verse 29, and come forth mm -hmm. those who have done good to the resurrection of life. I want to pause right here because I don't want you to get Christ's words twisted. Okay. You going to heaven has nothing to do with you doing good deeds. Yeah. Nothing at all. You will never ever in this life, right? Or when you go to heaven, mm -hmm. you will never ever meet somebody in heaven who says, yeah, I got there because I kept the Ten Commandments and I gave to the poor and I always came to church and kid folk, you know, I tied, I, I made it rain in church, right? You, there's be nobody in heaven who's bragging and saying, I got to heaven because of what I did. The yeah. only testimony that every person will ever have who makes it to heaven is that Christ is the reason why I'm here. He died on the cross for my sins yeah. and he offered me the free gift and I took it, right? He told me all I need to do was believe and that's what I did and I believed him. And so now because I believe him, I want to live a life that's pleasing to him, right? I want to live a life where Christ lives his life through me. And that's why we can do good, right? Verse 29, and come forth those who have done good to the resurrection of life. Okay? Christ makes it plain in Jeremiah, look, the heart is deceitfully wicked or desperately sick. Who can understand it, right? Look, your heart is so wicked and cruel, you come up with stuff in your mind and you fool yourself to think that you're good enough and you're not. That's why people in this world, right, <laughs> can say that they think they're going to heaven and they can give you every excuse of why they think they can make it aside from the truth. And that is Christ and Christ alone. Not baptism, not keeping the Ten Commandments. It is faith in Christ and Christ alone, right? Because our hearts are sick and twisted, we do what we feel is right. And 
our minds are altered by what we see in this life, right? Why do you think so many people do so much crazy stuff on social media? Because they yeah. just doing what they see. <laughs> Point blank period, right? Then he says here, verse 29 again, and those who have done evil to the resurrection of mm -hmm. condemnation. Okay, now let's kind of break this up a little bit more. There's two resurrections, okay? Dead men will rise. Let me tell you this. Every man who has ever died is alive somewhere, right? They just, the soul never dies and never sleeps, okay? That person is alive somewhere. This physical body dies and goes into the ground, but the soul is what's alive, right? And remember, your soul is made up of three things. It's made up of your mind, your will, and your emotions. That's who you truly are, right? This is just a physical house. But when I die, you can try to talk to me all day long. I can't hear you. I can't see you because the soul is gone, all right? <laughs> The personality of the person, all that's embedded in the soul. So we're looking, right? When it says the resurrection, it's really just speaking about the physical body. But the soul goes to either be with the Lord or it goes straight to hell. That's it. Ain't no purgatory. Ain't no second chances. Ain't no in-between. All you have literally is right now. Okay? Mm -hmm. So again, two resurrections. The first one is the resurrection of life. The second one is the resurrection of condemnation. Resurrection of life. Let's get you the good news first, right? The good news is amazing, right? The resurrection of life. Now, we don't want to get this twisted. There is a time, an appointed time, when Jesus comes back and rules and reigns on the earth for a thousand years, legitimately, okay? But, the resurrection of life or the rapture is when Jesus just appears in the sky. He does not come to the ground. His feet don't touch the ground. He appears in the sky. And then some things begin to transpire. Let's see what they are. First Thessalonians chapter four, verses 13 through 18. This is Paul speaking to the church in Thessalonica. Okay. And Somebody sent some information or they sent a false letter saying that the rapture had already taken place. And now the church is like, yo, what you mean, bro? Uh, Christ came and he left us? And, and Paul had to come in and kind of let them know, hey, now, nah, bro, let me give you some information so you can know for sure what the rapture is going to entail. Okay. Start at verse 13. We do not want you to be uninformed brothers and sisters concerning those who are asleep now this word asleep means death okay means people who have died but the body we call it sleep because christ is going to wake it up in the resurrection okay so again we do not want you to be uninformed brothers and sisters concerning those who are asleep so that you will not grieve like the rest who have no hope. Now, why is this important? Because, look, this is real reality, okay? The real reality is your mama gonna die. Your daddy gonna die. Yeah. Your kids might die before you, okay? Your cousins, somebody that you love is going to die, Okay? Why? We saw it in the last lesson because we've all seen and come short mm -hmm. of the glory of God. Okay? Yeah. So, with that being said and done, death is going to come. And when it comes, if that person is saved, if they've given their life to Christ, you can see the evidence in their life, right? Yo, I don't have to grieve like this is the last time I'm going to ever see them. Alright? Some people, they are unconsolable. <laughs> <laughs> right, they they gone, they yeah. gone, gone, and no matter what you tell them, they sick with it. They just there's nothing you can say to console them and bring them anything because yeah. 
that's it for them, right? Yeah. They truly feel like that's all she wrote. And look, if a person dies outside of Christ, that truly is it for them. And they, it ain't no more fellowship or dapping them up or any of that. That's that's over, right? Yeah. Okay. But we're talking about believers in the faith. Okay. And and Paul is concerned, and so he's seeing something. He's saying, "We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, concerning those who are asleep." So that you will not grieve like the rest who have no hope. Yes, yeah. grieving is important because that's that's a part of human nature. Death was never a part yeah. of God's plan in the first place. We were yeah. never supposed to die, but because sin entered into the world, we have to die. Okay. But there's an appropriate way to grieve. Okay. Mm -hmm. Verse 14. For if we believe, go that word again, believe. If we believe that Jesus died and rose again in the same way, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Which way? What? What you mean? He going to bring the people who died? He going to bring them with him? What you talking about? Let's keep reading. Verse 15. For we say this to you by a word from the Lord. We who are still alive at the Lord's coming will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. Bro, now I'm even more confused. What are you talking about? Okay. We who are still alive. So something's transpiring. And when it says proceed, those who have fallen asleep, remember, this is a synonym for saying death. So people who are dead are buried in the ground. People who are alive, that's me and you. Let's just say me and you alive right mm -hmm. now. Okay. We alive and we looking, but but something is going on. What do you mean don't not we won't proceed them? Verse 16. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout. Okay, so you're gonna hear a loud shout, okay, with the archangel's voice. So the archangel is the highest angel there is, position-wise. Okay, so the archangel is going to have a loud shout. So loud that the whole world will hear it. Okay. And mm. accompanied with that and with the trumpet of God. So you're going to hear, ah, it's going to get everybody. And then you're going to hear this trumpet blast. Okay. And then look, it says, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Yo, the bodies, the physical bodies of the dead saints who have died. Before you die, right? Now, everybody who's ever died in Christ at any point in time in life, they're all of their physical bodies from every place in the world. If they got drowned in a Titanic, if they got blown to bits in World War II, if they got killed by an animal and eaten, right? Their entire body is going to come back physically. Bam, into one. This ain't nothing. God made Adam from the dust. God could reanimate a body that's dead. There ain't no problem. Right, but their physical bodies are going to rise up. Okay, when that shout happens and when that trumpet blows, then we who are still alive, who are left, right, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So, first the dead yeah. rise, <laughs> their bodies go up. And what's incredible is, remember, when Jesus appears in the sky, it says that he will bring with him the souls of those who had already died. So everybody who already died in Christ, their souls appear with Jesus in the clouds and their physical body meets their soul and their spirit. Bam! And they have their new body. You ain't got to worry about diabetes. You ain't got to worry about sickness. You ain't got to worry about gaining weight. You got your new eternal body, right? That's no longer guided by sin, but by the spirit of God. Super incredible, right? Uh, <laughs> and then it says that we, something going to happen to us. Then we who are still alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds. So they go first, but we right on their heels. Oh, snap, right? <laughs> to meet the Lord in the air, and so will always be with the Lord. We change in the blink of an eye, right? I, we're going to have new bodies that are going to change. Um, and 
again, it'll be without sin. It won't be affected by sin anymore for eternity. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. And so this is, again, what we call the resurrection of life. This is what you can look forward to if you have the audacity to put your faith in Jesus Christ. This is one reason why I'm so outspoken about Jesus. And I don't care about tiptoeing around what anybody says or offending anybody. Fam, have you read this? Have you seen what God has in store for you? And you worried about offending people? Man, please. <laughs> I'm focused on pleasing the Lord because Ooh, God has yeah. promised this. Right? He, look, if you believe in Jesus, you have to believe in the resurrection of life because he yeah. rose. You see what I'm saying? There's no reason for us to be ashamed or be worried about what people say. He is the blesser. He is the source, mm -hmm. not the resource. <laughs> he is the source of yeah. all blessings, right? Yeah. And so that there is just the resurrection of life. If you have the audacity to accept the free gift that Jesus gives, this is what he promises you. He promises, and the Lord don't break his promise. Yeah. But then there's the resurrection of condemnation. Condemnation, yeah. Jesus promises this. He's telling you. Wait, matter of fact, before we move forward, any questions so far, any thoughts, criticisms, anything? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, we all good? You, you preaching, bro. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Make sure we straight. All right. Now, for those who have died outside of Christ, for those who curse the name of Christ, for those who say, I see what you're saying, but I'm good on it, or I hear what you're talking about, but I'm going to wait till I get old, older, and then I'll give my life to Christ. And you might not make it that far, right? You might die before you get old. But for those who have accepted, I mean, rejected the free gift of God, this is what they have to look forward to. Revelation 19, 11 through 15. Now, remember, when you die, your soul leaves your body, okay? Your physical body goes into the ground, you're buried, but your soul goes to either be with the Lord Jesus Christ in heaven yeah. or you go to hell. Mm -hmm. But hell is not the end of the story. What you mean? Let's check it out. Revelation 19, 11 through 15. Then I saw a great white throne and one seated on it. Earth and heaven fled from his presence and no place was found for them. Now, this is at the end of a thousand year reign, okay? Christ reigns on the earth for a thousand years. And for us who have served him, he gives us authority to rule over the cities and the towns and the countries and the continents here on the earth, right? He, he rewards us for our obedience by allowing us to rule and govern in his name on the earth, right? But after that thousand years is up, Satan is released from his prison and he's able to come back to the earth, right? For a little while to see who is willing to follow him one last time as he tries to come and make war with Jesus Christ and his saints, right? But the Bible says that after he gathers his army, because there's going to be a lot of fools, who want to link up with Satan because they don't like how Jesus is so fair. They don't like how Jesus has made the world a utopia. They don't like all the blessings of Christ. I can't stand this Jesus and everything that he's doing. I want to rule it my way. Let's link up with Satan and let's call, let's do what it is that Satan wants to do. They will come and they will uh, make a circle around the holy city, New Jerusalem, where Jesus' base camp will be. And when they do, the Bible says that Fire comes down from heaven. God the Father sends fire down, consumes them all, and Satan is cast, not into hell, but into the lake of fire. Okay? Then look at this right here. Then John says, all of a sudden, bam, you can find this all in Revelation 19. Then I saw a great white throne, and one seated on it, earth and heaven fled from his presence, and no place was found for them. I also saw the dead, the great and the small, standing before the throne, 
and books were opened. Okay, so all of a sudden, after Satan is cast into the lake of fire, a huge throne comes out of nowhere. It's called the great white throne. And the face of the one on the throne is so holy. The Bible says that the heavens, that is the sky that we can visibly see, the heavens and the earth flee from the one who's on the throne. Can you imagine that scene? I don't even know where we are. 3D universe, I, I can't tell you where we are at this point in time. But what I can say is it's called the judgment seat of Christ. And this is a judgment that you don't want to be in, okay? <laughs> and then John said, I looked and I saw the dead, the great and the small, standing before the throne. And books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by what was written in the books. Okay, so imagine, I said this yesterday, imagine standing before Jesus Christ, the one who has mm -hmm. the eyes of flame and fire that sees straight through you and sees everything, right? And now you have to give an answer for every sin you've ever committed in your life, right? We've all done things that we wouldn't tell nobody. Christ brings that up in the forefront. He sees it all. And you got to answer for it because you refuse to accept the forgiveness that he gives and it's totally free. All right. <laughs> Another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by what was written in the books. Then, check it. The sea gave up the dead which were in it. Didn't I tell you about the Titanic? And death and Hades gave up the dead that were in them. You know, the only reason why people, when they die, they can't get back up is because death has a permanent grip, right, on them. It's holding them down. They're unable to get up because death is holding them down. But then look at what it says. And death and Hades gave up the dead. Finally, death releases its grip. The soul comes out of hell, returns to the physical body. And now that body, that person, that soul stands before Jesus Christ at the great white throne judgment to answer for every sin they've ever committed. Right. <laughs> then the sea gave up the dead that were in it and death and Hades gave up the dead that were in them. Each one was judged according to their works. Death and Hades were thrown and to the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. The lake of fire is so bad that hell itself is cast into the lake of fire. You can't even imagine what that's like. And verse 15, and anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. Remember, we are focusing upon one thing in particular. Jesus is the resurrection. And every man who's ever died will rise again. <laughs> he will. One reason why it's so important that we have Christ lead our lives and be the Lord of our lives is because he provides a gift that has no measure, right? Forgiveness of sin. <laughs> Heaven is dope. But there can be no heaven for you if you have not allowed Jesus to forgive you of sin. That's the free gift that he wants to give you, right? Look, we don't realize in our day-to-day -day lives we offend a holy and righteous God. We don't realize that. You going around cussing? The stuff that you think in your mind that you know ain't right is sinful, right? Uh, There's a lot of stuff that we do. To get ahead in life, we cheating is sinful, right? And there are things out there that go against God and we don't even realize, dang, I didn't know that was a sin, right? Yo, but God wants to reconcile with you, right? He knows that sin is going to cause you to die. And so because he knows sin is going to cause you to die, he wants to give you new life, okay? Remember, Jesus is the resurrection and these are two resurrections that he is going to do. The resurrection of life and the resurrection of condemnation. The question is, which side of the fence are you going to be on? Okay, so let's move through this so we can finish up this lesson. Okay. 
Now we're coming back to the conversation that I'm breaking down with you, right? Jesus has come back. He's still at the house of Lazarus, okay? And he's seen the sister of Lazarus, Martha. And of course, he's going to see Mary, but they're having a conversation about him being the resurrection, okay? Now, Martha's speaking to Jesus once again. She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the son of God who is to come into the world, okay? So she had faith. She believed that he is the Christ, the son of God. Okay, but she still needs some help with her theology. There's some things that she misunderstands, and Christ is going to help to correct that, right? Verse 28, and when she had said these things, she went her way and secretly called Mary, her sister, saying, the teacher has come and is calling for you. Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw that Mary got up quickly and went out. They followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to cry there. Okay. Verse 32. As soon as Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and told him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. When Jesus saw her crying and the Jews who had come with her crying, he was deeply moved in his spirit and troubled. Okay. Now, when something happens and you're troubled, that means that something's wrong, right? Let's not get it twisted and think that Jesus was just like, oh, man, no, something's not right. Okay. So let's look at this. We're going we're gonna to break it down just a little bit. Extra information. The Jews who came with her weeping, according to Jewish oral tradition, the funeral custom indicated that even a poor family must hire at least two flute players and a professional wailing woman to mourn the dead. So when somebody died in the Jewish custom, especially at this time, they would have people who would uh, go around, they would play a flute or whatever. It was like to bring about the, uh, the idea or the sadness of mourning so that people can, you know, properly yeah. mourn. But then they also hired somebody who was a professional mourner, right? So this woman got paid just to cry. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> right? And it's just like, for real, bro? <laughs> that's what we doing but that's what they did it was part of their custom yeah. they had they didn't even had to know who you was oh somebody died <laughs> yeah. cut all the waterworks fam that's all they did <laughs> and just try to rub your back and comfort you right yeah. <laughs> because the family may have been wealthy a rather large group appears to be present so it speaks and says a lot of the Jews came so they had a lot of people there okay but remember, Jesus, Jesus is so cold and how he do what he do. Initially, he kind of set it up because he knew what it was going to happen. And he, he the word was going to spread based on what he was about to do. OK, uh, the phrase here does not merely mean that Jesus was deeply touched when it says that he was troubled. Right. It does not mean that Jesus was deeply touched or moved with sympathy at the sight. The Greek term groaned always suggests anger outrage or emotional indignation jesus was not happy when it says he was troubled because he saw the way these people were reacting okay most likely jesus was angered at the emotional grief of the people because it implicitly revealed unbelief in the resurrection and the temporary nature of death okay so again death is temporary okay Death is not something that's going to last unless you have faced a second death. And that's what we call the resurrection of condemnation. Okay. <clears throat> but again, they were weeping and wailing like that's all she wrote. Ain't no resurrection going to come. Jesus ain't. Uh, it is what it is. Right. And that's what upset him because, yo, this is not true. Like this ain't all it is to it. Do you not know who I am? It's kind of like a slap in the face. 
you know, to Christ. Oh, I believe that Jesus really is who he says he is. But, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's still crying like that's it. There, there's no hope in what they got going on. OK. Um, again, the group was acting like pagans who had no hope. While grief is understandable, the group was acting in despair, thus indicating the denial of the resurrection and the scripture that promised it. OK, so they've seen the scripture that speaks about the resurrection of those who die in Christ. OK, uh, Jesus may also have been angered because he was indignant at the pain and sorrow and death that sin brought into the human condition. Right. Jesus never meant for none of us to die. OK, uh, again, we said them through the rest. We almost at the end. Verse 34, uh, Jesus asked the question to them after he sees all of this well and in sadness. Where have you put them? He asked. Lord, they told him, come and see. Jesus wept. OK, Jesus wept not because Lazarus was dead, because he knew what he was about to do. He wasn't he wasn't weeping behind that. But Jesus is truly moved by what we deal with and what we experience. What hurts us hurts him, right? He cares about us and he's crying, right? He's weeping because of what sin has brought upon the world. He never intended for death to come or for us to even experience pain, right? It was never his intent when he created Adam and Eve, but when sin entered into the world, it brought these elements that God never intended. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, couldn't he who opened the blind man's eyes also have kept this man from dying? <laughs> All right, so I gave y'all the information already. Verse 38. Then Jesus deeply moved again, right? So he mad again. He giving like a, <sighs> right? <laughs> deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus says, remove the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, told him, Lord, there is already a stench because he's been dead for four days. She didn't hear. She heard, but she ain't here with Jesus. He said that I am the resurrection. <laughs> Lord, why would you open it up? What are you doing, Lord? He's been dead four days. Bruh, I... <laughs> Verse 40, right? Sometimes you got to be like, look, <laughs> Jesus said to her, did not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they removed the stone. They pushed it. They rolled it out the way. Then Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you heard me. I know that you always hear me, but because of the crowd standing here, I said this so that they may believe you sent me. After he said this, he shouted with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. The dead man came out bound hand and foot with linen strips and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unwrap him, or like the KJ, King James Version say, loosen and let him go. Can you imagine? Can you imagine just the awestruckness of the people at that moment when they move the stone? Mary and Martha, why would you open the stone? Why? Right? They bugging. Everybody looking at this. Then Jesus says, Lazarus, come forth. The moments between after, right after he says that, and then the moment between when they see a human figure emerge out the darkness of that cave. Can you imagine what them, those moments felt like? And then when he said to, he, he didn't speak to the people that said loosen. He spoke to the bindings on him. Loosen and let him go. And the wrappings fell off of his body, fell to the floor. And the man who once was dead was fully whole, alive, no longer sick, but resurrected to life because Jesus is, Jesus is the resurrection. There is nobody like him. He is in the league of his own, 
right? You can't compare anything to Jesus because he's so far removed, right? Look, we watch Marvel movies. We, we, we love to see the Avengers and Iron Man throwing stuff. And it's cool to see all of that stuff, but it ain't real, right? But this is real. What you just read about the resurrection and the rapture is real. And Jesus engineers all of this simply by speaking the word. He just says, come forth, rise. And what do the dead do? The dead get up because there's nobody like Jesus. Look, our lesson for the day has come to a conclusion. Our entire hmm. purpose <laughs> is to illustrate and show you who is this Jesus that we worship? Who is this Jesus that the world mocks, right? They don't know him because they haven't spent time in the scriptures to see what he says about himself. There is nobody like Jesus. I like the way Pastor Hall said, who wouldn't want to serve a God like that? Yeah. Questions, comments, thoughts, criticisms. I'm listening. Talk to me. It, it, it gets good, man. It gets good. It gets man, get real um, good. It's funny that you mentioned earlier that uh, that book out. And um, yeah, you take that book out. He start looking at all your sins and everything. I always thought about that. Um, and I was told myself, man, I'm so glad I don't do too too much. But it's also what I think is different to what God thinks. There could be like a whole list of things that I don't even know about <laughs> that I've been doing. So it's mm -hmm. good to get in that work and stay. Sound like you, you cut off a little bit. In the word and remind yourself and um, can you hear me now? There we go, there we go. Uh-huh. I can hear you better now. Well, I could, you froze again. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was saying that it's good. To... I'm still frozen. You not, but I, I can I can hear you, but just barely. Well, now you're frozen again. I put in, I take, I missed, I put in the message. It's okay. I mean, look, I, I know how I go when you're at work. Long story short, uh... great, great message. <laughs> Praise be to the Lord. And look, hey, when we accept yeah. the free gift that yeah, God I gives. Was, yeah. But, huh? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> when we accept that free gift that God uh -huh. gives, man, you don't have to worry about that book. You won't be in that judgment, right? you'll just be a part of the first resurrection. Your judgment right. takes place on the cross. And so Christ don't even bring up your sins up ever again. They totally, why Christ's sacrifice is so cold. It takes care of every sin you've ever done, the sins you might be presently doing, and it covers the sins of the future, right? That's how cold and complete his sacrifice was on the cross. Does that mean that now I can just live in sin and do what I want? Paul said, may it never be. Don't 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 do it like that, cause God will still whoop your yeah. butt, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But just know you can't lose your salvation, and you'll never mm -hmm. be judged yeah. or no sins, and never be brought up again because He died. He paid it all. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Madison. Yeah. Um. Kevin. Mister Lane. Any thoughts? Yeah. Questions. No, sir. No, man. Okay, okay, okay. Um, Kiwi, your mic off. I, I need I need to hear sound. What you what you say, Kiwi? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was running around tonight, but I'm gonna go back and catch up. But what I did hear was good. Go for you. I got you. Hey, I, I always just want to know if there's any questions, you know. That way if something needs to be explained a little bit more, I, I can definitely do it, you know. Um, but that's what it is. Hey, look, I appreciate y'all coming through. I ain't gonna hold you hostage, you know. So we're gonna pray it up. Anybody got any specific prayer requests? Anything? Yeah. It's um, all good. No pressure. I, I I like to be just pray, uh, pray for uh me and my uh the situation that we've been in, it it, it it gets better. For sure. So 
Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I really appreciate it. Okay. I got you on that, big bro. I got you. Yeah. All right. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer now if there's nothing else. Uh, Master, again, we come before you, Lord, just eternally grateful for who you are, Lord, and all that you do. And just eternally grateful for the fact that you continue to lavish your love upon us, Master, uh, in a way that we can never understand, Lord. All we can do is just sit back and just say thank you, Lord, and continue to commit our lives to you day after day, Lord, to show how grateful we are. Lord, uh, <laughs> I, our minds just can't even begin to process all that you are. But because you are so loving and because you are so wonderful, Master, all you desire is to continue to reveal more of yourself to us, Lord, in such an intimate fashion, fashion Lord. Uh, we are grateful, Lord. We love you, Master. And we want to live a life where you can continue to live your life through us. Lord, we want to continue to share with the world about who you are and how great and wonderful you are and how much you love all the sinners in this world, Father God, and how all you desire to do is just reconcile with every man, woman, boy, and girl so that they can have a place in your kingdom and live with you for eternity. Oh, Lord Jesus, we just thank you, Lord. We just thank you so much. Uh, we heard Brother Lane's request, Father God, and we pray, Lord, that you help him with this situation, Master, that you uh, yes. give him wisdom, Father God, in places that he lacks, that you put the right words in his mouth when he's speaking to people, Father, to uh, help his situation, Lord God. And we pray that you put the right people in his life who actually care enough about their fellow man to assist yes. him to get him everything that he needs. Heal his body, Father God, and yes. bring him back on one accord and allow him to continue to tell the world about who you are and your daughter and son, Jesus Christ. Master, we love you and we thank you. These are our blessings we ask of you in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Oop, there amen. it is. Thank you, man. For sure. As y'all know, on my YouTube page, I'll have this uploaded probably within the next 10, 15 minutes. Um, if y'all need the notes or whatever the PowerPoint printout, I can definitely send that your way as well. Uh, and of course, if you got any questions offline, y'all all I'll know my number. Hi, little boy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. All right, man. Y'all be blessed, man. Love y'all. See y'all next time. All right. Peace.